Hello, YouTube. Today's recording is coming off KubeCon. Um, last week was KubeCon in Detroit, and I'm going to provide an, another video with an update on what I saw, my perspectives of KubeCon, um, specifically with some of the interests that, um, that I had. So I'll, I'll follow up after this one with the video from KubeCon. But this is a presentation that I built or a demo that I built for the Red Hat booth that I presented to Red Hat that I presented in the Red Hat booth on the Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. So if you weren't there, um, this was the presentation. I've also included the presentation link in the slides right here. You can actually just go to my GitHub repo and just pull down the presentation. Uh, it, it's really just similar to this actually. This demo is actually pretty cool. It really emphasizes how easy it is to install and configure and utilize both F5 as well as Nginx and how well they integrate using the latest version of OpenShift. So this is the latest version. It's just been installed. And I'm demonstrating the integration here of F5 Big IP and the Nginx ingress controller configured through the operator using OpenShift 4.11. I'm ut utilizing some of the operators. The other thing that I'm doing is there's really no CNI. There's no CNI specifically. So I'm not using Cilium. I'm not using Calico. I'm not using Flannel. What I'm doing here is I'm using OVN Kubernetes. And OVN Kubernetes, what it's doing in this mode is I am simply just routing. And what that means is that it's big IP directly to pod. And big IP to pod with static routes, it, it, it's really that simple. And how do I do this? I'm gonna show you that in a, middle, in a minute. This solution is by, by a solution that we've created is called something called Ingress Link. And Ingress Link is a specific CRD. It's uncustomizable. I mean, yeah, you can change a few things like the public IP and that's it. And maybe you can, and other than that, you can add an IRO. You can also do eDNS. So those three things. Now, do you have to use ingress link CRD? No, you can use a transport server or a virtual server, but then you're not using ingress link. Ingress link is a simplified, simplified type like load balancer, not type load balancer, but simplified load balance solution that you would get something similar to what you would find in public cloud. It is basically layer four, pass through for both port 80 and for port 443. You create the ingress link CRD and you're done. There's no customization necessarily, but if you want to customize, go for it. Use a virtual server CRD. You can even use a policy CRD. You can add external DNS. It's totally up to you. So that builds upon, I think, ingress link um, but again, ingress links is kind of where we start. It's kind of like your A option. And then from there, you can move to like B and C if you want to use transport server or virtual server CRD. In fact, ingress link actually uses a transport server, right? It's layer four, pass through. So this solution demonstrates the better together using F5, big IP. Think of that as your OpenShift router, your OpenShift ingress, your OpenShift um, ADC. It's your load balancer that gets the traffic into the OpenShift cluster. Some of the things that are important there is that you can leverage potential existing big IPs. You can use those big IPs specifically with an OpenShift tenant or an OpenShift partition. You can enable stuff like WAF, BART, DOS to firewall traffic to make sure that traffic coming into the cluster is meant for the cluster. Right? So those are some of the options that you can do. The solution is really enabling a elegant control plane, right? That offers a unified method working with both technologies really in a single interface. So offering the best of what Big IP and Nginx can bring together or what they fo foster, potentially helping or, if it, or, or removing any types of um, teams issues uh, and 
co collaborating really across the network as well as the development team. So in this instance here, we've got the network develop network teams or the big IP teams that are managing these big IPs. They really just need to create the routes. Um, the operator administrator or the OpenShift administrator can create the operators. So each CIS has its own instance configuring to or pointing to its own big IP. The OpenShift OpenShift operator or OpenShift admin will create these two and then would also create the Nginx and then CIS would monitor these Nginx instances. And so if, 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 if they go from three to five, then CIS would automatically configure the big IP. So that's really the solution here. What we're doing here is in this case, we're using an ingress class. An ingress class to create the HTTP routing from here. So what you're doing is CIS creates the virtual IP, gets the traffic in, all the traffic goes to the Nginx cluster. From Nginx, we use an HTTP routing. And this is a simple ingress class that is configured here. Because we're using the CRDs, you do need to install the CRD schemas. It's really important. So what we have is two big IPs that are configured as a cluster. You can actually see that there's an active and there is a standby, they're in sync, and you can actually see that here. What you can also see is from the network perspective, I've created some static routes. So I have a three node worker cluster and my pod network is on the 10.128, 10.129, and 10.131. So what I've done is I've created static routes to these networks using the following gateway. This is the node IP. And I can get this by actually looking up some information, um, which I've actually created here. So you can actually pull this information, make sure that we're in shared gateway mode, and then pull that information from here. So you can actually pull it here, find your host address, find your node subnet, and then once you've got that information, basically create the static routes using TMSH. Sync the devices, off you go. That's it. It's really that simple. As you can see, that is what I've created over there. So the next piece that you would need to do is simply deploy two CIS instances. There is the one CIS instance. This is the one big IP here. This is the second big IP. I am using CRDs and the namespace is of Nginx Ingress. That's it. No, no tunnels, nothing. Just deploy these four files. Make sure you deploy the cluster or binding, the schema, and the creds. And you can view those pods if you want to as well. You can view them or view them from the GUI. The next piece is, of course, the Nginx piece. Now, Nginx is not my wheelhouse. I am the CISPM. Um, so this information can change. But this is what it currently is as of the Ingress Controller 2.4, which is the latest Ingress Controller, but I did see that one's coming out. And this is the latest operator, 1.2. So to get this working, I've created, a, there's a pointed it to a blog. Um, first thing you need to do is load this file. This file is some kind of like security, security information. If you don't load this file, what will happen is the Nginx pod and the service won't be created. So it's really important that you load this file. The next thing is you need to install the instance. So let's go and take a look at what this is. Um, the operator will go up to the installed operator. And so what I did is you go ahead and install the operator and then create the instance. And when you create the instance, I can go here. When you create the instance, just make sure you change the name as well as enabling ingress link is true. That is all you have to do. And you can actually just install it from there. There are other changes that you can make. By all means, you can go ahead and do that. But if you want to just keep things as simple, um, then just follow this instruction. I've provided an example of the SCC file here. Just click on my repo. So go ahead and validate. You can see here that the pod 
is running. I have one replica. You can increase those replicas. We'll do that. There's a deployment here as well. And there's the service. This is the service. The service is created. This is the service that CIS is going to monitor. That's the endpoint. And that service is connected to this pod. So that's really important. So let's go to the pod. You can see here is the pod. Here is the deployment. Let's scale this up as in the diagram to three of these guys. So I'm just scaling up to two are pending, one is running. So I'm just scaling up to three of these. Perfect. So that should be scaling. One is terminating. Hmm. Okay. Sure why that is not scaling. It should scale in the deployment file here. But any case. So is running operator. It should load those deployments. Any case. So that is the Nginx piece. If you have any challenges on the Nginx piece, reach out to your Nginx, Nginx folks. They will help you with the Nginx piece, uh, specifically within OpenShift. So that that there, there's a couple of folks there. That repo that I provided, you can use that if that the information in the repo if you wanted to. Um, most likely, most likely, what's what's operating this pod is the um, replica set. So you might want to change replica sets. Um, to, to do, you can see the replica sets right here. Here's the Nginx replica sets um, for this for this pod. So now that we have the pod pod created, one thing that you can do next is to set up the service. So there's a couple things you do. One thing that you need to do is add the label. This label is really important because CIS is going to use this label for service discovery. This is the ingress ingress link label. And so this label has to be configured in the service. So if I go down to the service and actually click in here, you can see that there's the pod selector. So that 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 pod selector needs to be here and what I did was I basically just added this annotation, this simple label here. So it's really important that that label is there. And, and you can see that because um, when you go to the, when you create the CIS CRD, you, you'll see that the label needs to match up. Create your application. I'm just using a very simple cafe app. Um, there's the secret, there is the ingress. Those are created. You can see there's the demo. And then here is the virtual server CRD. It is actually pretty simple. I'm going to open this on a new tab and I'm going to blow this up. But what I want to show you here is that this label, this label here, this is the most important thing. This label here needs to match that, that item right there. So make sure that, so make sure that that label there matches that value. This is my host, cafe.example.com. This is my public IP address. It's my virtual IP that will get configured. That's all you need to do. So this is a this is a abstracted, simplified ingress link CRD. If you want to use virtual server CRD, you can do that. That means that you go in up to layer seven. If you want to terminate TLS or do edge and then send clear traffic, or you can re-encrypt. That way you can add policies. Um, with stuff like WAF, BOTOS, that you can do as well. That's no problem. There are web, there are links on my page that will help you with that. So once you have configured that virtual server CRD, you're pretty much ready to go. So let's go ahead and create that virtual server CRD. And we created the CRD right there. So we can go on to our active big IP and you can see there is the configuration it shows up right away and it's green because we're actually creating a monitor so we've got a pool here this is our pool and inside our pool we have this monitor so what we're doing here if we actually look at this monitor 
we're actually monitoring the liveness of the actual app itself. You can actually see here, it's actually monitoring this Nginx ready service on port 8081. So that's really important. So if the Nginx service actually goes down, we're gonna monitor that, we're gonna take it down. So that's this example here. And so here is my virtual server. And this is the active. So what? Let's let's sync these first. Let's get rid of. You don't really have to, because the configuration is on both. Because there's two CIS instances, so you can see it's green, green as well. So these monitors are up. You don't have to sync it. You can just leave it if you want. Um, but we'll sync it. Why not? We'll just do a quick sync, and it will change configuration pending. So there we go, syncing is complete. You can see standby sync. Let's try and connect to these apps. We'll reload that one, reload that one. So there is tea, there is coffee, and you can see the request IDs are changing. So that's working fine. Uh, how about we fail this over? So let's go to active, and we'll force this to standby. And the biggest thing is to watch this right here. See that? You can see that these are continuing to increment. So there is no problem with the HTTP connections, able to connect to the virtual standby. And if I go back and you can see everything's green here. If I go back and we'll fail this one back over, we'll force this to standby and back over to the master. This one will become active. You can see our transactions are perfect. So that is a very, very simple demo of setting up this environment. Again, um, if you need more information on the Nginx piece, just work with your F5, F5 sales organization on the Nginx piece. It's not really, um, as I said, I, it, it's not really my piece, but I've pulled in the information here, um, documented it as best as, as I know um, with the information. But what this shows is a really cool integrated architecture of the two kind of working together. And, and there's a lot more coming in this space. And uh, so if you want to set, if you want to set this up, fork this repo, uh, contribute back if you want, if you find out uh, there's anything that, uh, that anything needs, needs, needs to be changed or create, a, create an issue on my page, um, provide some feedback. If you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to increase my subscribers. And, um, and that's it. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.